guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we are working on our Malaysian tapir habitat and as you can see we're starting off with a little bit of a shed. It's supposed to be like a rundown just kind of you know maybe farm building or house that was maybe in this kind of plains area we've got going on. So the idea would be basically that um, you know this is the jungle but it's also like where the jungle kind of meets the swamp areas so there's a little bit of lowlands, a little bit of grassland just trying to you know really sell this kind of jungle area. So yeah, this is basically just like, you know, perhaps it was somebody's house, perhaps it was just a shed or something like that, and I'm just really, really trying to sell this kind of like dilapidated, falling down, maybe farm building or something like that. So I thought this would make a nice little feature for this habitat and also just be a nice little indoor kind of sheltered area for um, for the tapir. So yeah, um, that's kind of what I was going for really. Um, again, just, you know, trying to really sell that kind of dilapidated it's been in the jungle nature's sort of taken over kind of a theme and you know as my last job I spent a lot of time kind of looking at uh, inside roofs and things and just trying to um see what was in people's like loft spaces so you sort of get a feel for kind of like you know the beams and stuff so here you know I was trying to make it feel like you know the roof's basically fallen off and fallen in um and yeah I was actually really pleased with how it turned out and you know you've got to remember that the, there's those kind of cross beams and you know they're not going to lie straight if they're missing out the bits of support so you've got to make sure you know that you kind of sell that story you know I think that's that's the main thing you know with Planet Zoo is you're trying to sell that kind of story to what what your kind of habitat what's the theme of your habitat what story you're trying to tell so yeah just adding you know the jungle stuff now really kind of you know making it look like nature's taking over so yeah so this habitat as well it's got like a pool because you know we, we all know how uh, tapirs absolutely love to swim so um and you know i really really hope that we do see kind of you know the diving animations for the tapirs in the future because we do kind of uh you know we've got the bears now with a new update which is super exciting um i've actually yet to see it in game but um at the same time you know with the, the polar bears and the grizzly bears diving that's so exciting so um hopefully we'll get tapirs next that's on my wish list for diving animals um, so yeah, the Malaysian tapir, well they're, they're quite an interesting species of tapir really because they're the only uh, species that's in like Asia, you know, they're sort of found in kind of like the Sumatra, kind of Thailand areas, um, and you know, they're mainly nocturnal as well, like they have very poor eyesight, that's why they've got such like, kind of long noses and um, big ears because they rely mainly on their sense of smell and their uh, ears for like, you know, keeping an eye out for predators and things like that. Um, so you know, they're they're quite an, an old species as well, so, um, you know, there's been many, many species of tapirs in existence throughout history, and we now only have about five left on the planet. I think there was one that was like the giant tapir as well, which I would have loved to have seen. Um, but yeah, so, you know, that's why they have that kind of like, you know, little trunk thing that's a kind of almost, you know, one of the very characteristic of kind of prehistoric creatures. So again, they're a very, very old species, their own very distinct genus as well. Um, interestingly enough, they can actually live up to like 30 years in captivity. Um, I imagine in the wild it's a lot less. Um, but yeah, in captivity it is up to like 30 years, which is, you know, it's not bad going really. Uh, and they're also such weird looking creatures. Um, I particularly like the Malaysian tapir as opposed to the bear's tapir in the game because I really like the, the coloration on it. And obviously in the wild, you know, the coloration does act as a kind of camouflage um, because it basically kind of blend into the scenery and make them look a bit like rocks and stuff. So yeah, uh, that's a bit about the tapir. Um, no, I think they're really cool animals, and I always like seeing them at the zoos. I think they're always with capybaras. Like I wish we had capybaras just to give our tapirs friends, you know. Uh, I remember this time I went to Chester Zoo, and there was this like uh, capybara that was being like licked by this tapir, and that capybara was in heaven. He was just enjoying like really being licked on the face by this tapir, and he had this like funny little look on his face. It was great. Um, yeah, I think that was at Chester Zoo, actually. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I I think that, you know, they're always, you know, your kind of iconic animals that you go see at the zoo. So as you can see, I'm having a bit of fun here building the fence. Like, a lot of this habitat, again, is quite natural, um, kind of going with the rest of the jungle theme, I guess, for the area. Um, so with, because, like, they're kind of herbivorous animals um, and they're kind of docile animals, I haven't bothered to go into too much detail here with, you know, like, back areas and stuff. Um, so... You know, I'm, I'm aiming for kind of uh, semi-realistic, but also just very heavily themed because that's the, that's what I enjoy the most. I'm not a realism person. I don't want to have like too much realism in my zoos because it takes the fun out of it for me. I'm not that kind of a builder, I guess. Um, I like to just you know get creative and just see what sticks really. So um, 
yeah, I was having a bit of fun with these fences. Um, I, again, I'm getting more and more into building pieces customly, like, um, you know, having like custom fences and just building buildings completely from scratch, which I'm super excited to start with the um, Africa pack, which I have got. And there will be some Africa pack videos coming out shortly. It's just I'm a bit behind and work's been busy and yeah I, I it takes me a while to get videos out i also had a bit of like creative block when this pack came out i was just sort of staring at it like oh my god what am i going to build with this like I, I need to build something but i just don't know what so um but now that has since gone and there will be i think a video in the next couple of weeks um which will be the start of the the pack stuff i think as well as i said as i've said previously it's the alphabet zoo which is kind of holding me back a little bit with my creativity because it is such a slow laggy save now that it is quite difficult to build in and that in itself can sort of kill your motivation a bit but yeah i think i'm coming to the end of this speed build now so i will leave you with the rest of the speed build as you watch me try and do something with the foraging feeder like i hate leaving them like that i like to you know make a building around them but the trouble is because they're like hexagonal or octagonal even you always end up with like the octagonal shape and it, it's just so annoying i wish they were slightly different shapes or you could like sink them into the ground a bit more sometimes you can sometimes you can't it's always a bit tricky to sort that out but yeah i will leave you now with the rest of the speed build and i will catch you in the cinematics and live bit at the end so see you in a minute guys Right, so here we are with the Malayan Tapia habitat. As you can see, it's raining. I mean, we're in franchise mode, so there's not a lot we can sort of do about that. That's just like a flowing, glowing orb over there. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, the Tapias are successfully using this little ramshackle building, um, which, you know, I, I'm really pleased to see them use it. Like, um, their actual traversable area is quite a decent size. So if we go to traversable area, I guess education correct. Yeah, they can't get to this part of the habitat, which was kind of intentional. Like, I wanted them to kind of just stay to this front area where that you know they can be viewed by the guests and stuff. So yeah, it's cool just to see them. And you know they've got a little rubber ducky just you know floating in there. And of course all the plants get highlighted when I do that. But yeah, so you know I think it, I was really really pleased with just how this turned out. I think it's you know tapirs are never like a main attraction. They're always just like one of those animals that you happen to walk by. I think. I think it's not very often for um, tapirs to be like the keystone species, as it were, of the zoo. Um, yeah, here we go. Let's watch him go for a swim. Hey, okay, there we go. But yeah, so you know, they're always like one one of those animals that you sort of stop while you're on the way. I guess um, you never really like spend time like a lot of time looking at them, which is that's kind of what I was going for. You know, you can see all the guests kind of walking by. They're just chilling looking at the tape here as, as we, they walk by and yeah I think it, it, it really does give off that vibe and yeah we have what are they named what are I name we've got Patches and Boris because why not this is def he's definitely a Boris I mean look at him he's just such a Boris um but yeah and then also if we go to the zoo at night time I have done some lighting work um doop there we go so yeah if you come out of the habitat over here you can kind of just see I have done a little bit of lighting work it's not entirely perfect um, we're mainly, mainly using the torches for this kind of area just to try and like sell this area I just realized actually there is no fence here there was a fence here originally um, I should probably go and rebuild that um, basically I believe the uh, fence I redid the fence recently because I tend to work on habitats like as I go along so let's just pop 
that in there just because. Uh, railing elevated. Yeah, so this is what it was originally. It was just the elevated path railing. Um, and it was like this on both sides, but I didn't like how it was. It was just too much elevated railing. Like, this is perfect for this area, I think, but I wanted to build this kind of custom fence for the otter habitat over here. So, um, yeah. And that's kind of it, really, for this habitat. It's just a small, quite quick build, and I was really pleased with how it turned out. So, yeah. And again, we've got like, the feeding area, which is ni nice and lit up. Again, it's supposed to be like a little maybe temple or shrine or something that's fallen down. And yeah, there's our tapirs, just happy, chilling in the uh, in the hut. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Um, take care, and yeah, see you then.